Okay, yeah. so uh, I'm here with Don Syme, the creator of F Sharp language, and uh, we are here to talk a little bit about F Sharp. Yeah. And I think my first question Lovely would be: to Have you here? We've uh, we've talked on on uh, Twitter and on to email and so on for uh, the last few years, and uh, it's great that you're here in Microsoft Research in Cambridge. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. Um, and I think my first question would be: uh, What was the main motivation for creating F Sharp language? Yeah, so um, we started F Sharp here at Microsoft Research uh, really so that we could, um, well, first of all, there's a lot of us here who love functional programming. Okay, we have uh, myself, we have, of course, the famous Simon Peyton Jones here in, in, uh, in, uh, in our lab, but not just the two of us, as maybe it was a group of uh, about 20 of us. And uh, we arrived <coughs> here when .NET was starting and we really wanted to make sure we could use functional programming in the context of .NET programming in the context of Microsoft and uh, it, um, and .NET was a major it, it was and is a very major part of the Microsoft programming ecosystem so uh, so our original motivation was to make sure we had a functional language we could use for real work uh, that captured the core of what we loved about functional programming and we could apply it and use it for real. So it was for us, we made it for ourselves. Right, and yeah. uh, it actually, it's a great thing that we have it on the .NET platform now. Yeah. Um, there will also some other attempts like uh, SML.NET, some earlier attempts. Yeah, now that's going back a long way in history. Yeah, so way back when we started F Sharp, we, um, we were looking around for different ways that we could bring functional programming uh, into .NET and, um, and also perhaps that we could bring other languages into, into Visual Studio. Uh, we, we looked at um, a Haskell for .NET. Uh, in the end, we, we also looked at taking a language called Standard ML uh, um, which, uh, and bringing that into, in, into .NET. But in the end, we decided that um, things were changing enough in how people wrote software that we needed a, a language which could adapt and change with that, it could be a modern language. There's, when you look at languages like uh, Standard ML, uh, they, they look a bit old by the standards of what we expect today. So we needed a language we could effect, effectively design for the modern software development era. Right. Um, um, if we can compare F Sharp to some functional languages which appear, for example, on Java platform, like Scala, yeah. Yeah. Um, they take a little bit different approach uh, when they integrate into the traditional syntax, while F Sharp uses the, like the traditional functional programming syntax from ML family. That's right, yes, that's right. And so when you look at Scala, you can look at it um, in one, People think of it as a functional language, but it really probably is better categorized as a primarily object-oriented language with functional elements. Uh, a lot of functional elements and a lot of good ones as well. Uh, Scala is a great language. Uh, uh, F Sharp, when you uh, approach it, it, it looks much more like a, uh, a, a, a functional language, what we call a functional first language. And, if you, and that comes through in how you learn the language. You learn about data, you learn about defining functions, you learn about defining transformations over those things. And it could be quite a long way down before you ever see a class or you ever see a new object type. In fact, there's many applications of F Sharp, especially in the data science kind of area, where you really don't ever define new types or well, fairly rarely you just compose the existing elements that, that, that you have. Um, so we did that for a reason. Uh, we there. Are, I guess F Sharp embraces type inference, uh, and that you get we get a lot of good things out, out of that. Uh, we, in particular, sort of Hindley Milner style of type inference, or at least when you don't use the object oriented elements of F Sharp. Um, so, yeah, we think the core functional approach to defining data, functions, transformations captures something very, impor very important about programming. Obje objects have their role, they, they, they absolutely play their role, but it's important not to see everything through the, root, through the, through the lens of objects. Uh, you, there's, there's a whole slice of programming which is about data 
and transformations, and that's what we're trying to capture uh, with 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 F sharp uh, in, in, as it's the first part of F sharp. I think it also has an advantage uh, when you use it like for learning functional programming that you need to change your mind and start thinking uh, differently. The different syntax helps a lot because if it's yeah. traditional syntax, you still tend to program in a traditional way. That's, I think there's some truth in that. Uh, it can be disorienting for people when they first see it. They can think uh, it's like, um, I've seen some people, I've, I've defined things like the list of numbers from one to a thousand. And then they all print out, or a list of tuples of numbers, uh, two numbers in their squares. And some uh, object, some object oriented programmers have come up to me and said, "Where? What is that?" Okay, of course it's actually in the implementation. It's an object, right? Under the hood, there's somewhere there's a, you know, it's allocating an array or something, and you can go down and look, look under the hood and see what's there. But they, and, they, and as the data gets generated, they say, "Where does it?" get written to and you say no it's just a value it's a mathematical it's best to think of it as a value and some but but if you've done too much object oriented programming people actually can't think that way anymore because they're thinking about objects too much it's like it's like thinking about the assembly code and the objects are a kind of an assembly code on in some ways under the hood that's how stuff happens under the hood or at least one part of object oriented programming is and you don't have to think of everything in terms of registers and transistors and you know, like at, in the assembly code right. of the world, you, you, you think, want to think at the right level for the problems you're trying to solve. And that's what functional programming tries to help you do. Yeah, yeah and um, speaking about learning functional programming, uh, some people say that uh, lazy and pure functional programming languages like Haskell are better suited for that, because like in pure functional programming, you cannot possibly do anything uh, like imperatively and um, that kind of limitation uh, forces you to yeah. learn new concepts. Yeah. Uh, so I, it, it, I, I would encourage everybody to do some pure functional programming, certainly. At some point you should do some pure functional programming without any side effects whatsoever. Uh, the, 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 uh, then you should also perhaps do some lazy programming though you learn how to use laziness and delayed computation so I think that's actually better done in a, in a language like F sharp where you choose to do that rather than do that everywhere okay uh, obviously the the key reason why you might learn F sharp instead of Haskell or in combination with Haskell is because you want to be pragmatic you want to be utilitarian you want to get lots of work done okay you want to actually create things which which can interoperate with software which you can deploy in practice and which you can um, interoperate with a wide range of libraries that are available uh, that's the number one key reason uh, 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 another reason is that um, F sharp because it's this pragmatic language it doesn't uh, or you can use some quite advanced abstractions when you need them, but you don't have to use them all the time. So right. it means you can learn about functional abstractions like uh, computation expressions in F sharp, and how and you can go and learn how they relate to things like monads in Haskell, for example. But you don't have to see the whole world through this abstractions. Abstractions are very useful in certain contexts, but you can overdo it. You can abstract things too much. You can kind of try to see the whole world in terms of, say, category theory or something like that. That's useful, but you've got to remember there's a reality. You've got to actually get real work done, and you've got to actually implement a real web server that does transformations and, and, and deliver that to customers and so on. So F Sharp places you much closer to that mindset where the focus is on actually delivering software that does it, that, that, that achieves a utilitarian task. And I'm proud of that because that's what it's for. It's for getting real work done. Yeah, we can probably say that Microsoft uh, and uh, through F Sharp democratizes functional programming in a certain way because uh, you don't need to get up to the level of understanding all the abstractions to use it in the real life. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it certainly brings the paradigm to a broader reach. And yeah, in a way, you, you, absolutely. We, we, we're trying to make it uh, the, the, the core set of functional ideas available in a much broader range of contexts. Yeah. Right. Um, 
what can we expect uh, from F sharp as a language in the future? Ah, oh, okay. So, well, F sharp is very mature, uh, and uh, I'm again proud of that. We've worked hard to make sure it's stable, and uh, you know, I, I sometimes think of it as like as like as like Python. Uh, uh, you know, Py uh, every, Python is everywhere. You can use it in all sorts of places, and F sharp similar. You can now kind of use it. There's Linux packages available, and one of the key things that we have to keep doing is making sure it's available in lots and lots of different ways of of, uh, of use, and that. That's about engineering comp uh, the compiler and the tools that are available and the packages that are available and make sure that what we know and love as F Sharp today is available in a very w wide range of contexts. So um, we please come and help us do that. Please join the F Sharp Software Foundation and get involved in GitHub and get involved in the engineering and, and, and help us deliver F Sharp very broadly. Uh, as a language, we continue to refine and improve some parts of the language. We don't break anything, uh, but we do improve some elements of, uh, of the language. The core of the language is extremely stable and really, really doesn't change. f -sharp code from eight years ago will continue to compile today and you can continue to use it. Uh, uh, we, if you want to find out the kind of suggestions that are around. There's a site called FSLang Suggestions for all the different suggestions that people have about the F-Sharp programming language. There's about 120 active suggestions which you can discuss and contribute to. Uh, we also have an RFC process for actual making actual design additions and changes to the language itself. So again, you can go and look through the RFCs and see what we're considering and what kind of things are, are, are active. Um, and of course, another key area is the set of libraries that are available for use with F Sharp. Uh, you know, what we're seeing is that F Sharp is becoming a better and better web programming language, a better and better cloud programming language. And so um, there's a lot of activity in that kind of area. Probably the best way to follow that is through the F Sharp weekly kind of uh, news reports uh, on, on the F Sharp language. And, um, and of course to create your own libraries and contribute to those, uh, the, the packages that are available. Uh, another area is about .NET Core. Uh, the .NET Core is the implement Microsoft's implement open source and cross-platform implementation of .NET. And we want F -sharp to be a great language in the context of .NET Core development. And over time we're going to see more and more .NET Core development uh, as, as people you know, take advantage of that cross-platform delivery uh, of, 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 of .NET. So those are probably the main, the main things on our mind. Okay, so thanks a lot for taking the time to talk with us. As I said, great to see you and I uh, hope to see you back here soon and uh, enjoy the course uh, with uh, Dimitri and um, uh, yeah, see you on uh, Twitter, hash F sharp. Great. Okay.